put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. In movie review. Brian Mills is an ex-CIA operative. He left the CIA so that he could spend more time with his daughter, Kim, because he missed a lot of time with her when she was growing up. And the main obstacle to this heartfelt desire is the bitchy ex-wife. You'll find that this is a movie where females are victims, bitches, virgins, and yeah, I think that's about it. That pretty well covers it. So she, the daughter wants to go to Paris, and Brian is reluctant. She she's under she's she's seventeen, underage, so she needs parent parental permission to leave the country, and he is reluctant, even though it's only Paris. He's certain that it's dangerous out there, and the ex-wife sternly tells him that he's pathetic for that, and the unbelievable thing is that the movie actually wants us to side with him and think that she's a horrible person for... Anyway, she, she goes to Paris, the daughter, and gets abducted because in the eyes of Americans, even Western Europe is not safe. That, that is taking xenophobia to a new level. And yes, I know this was made by French people. I, I, I don't know quite how they managed to import that much U.S. xenophobia. They, they do have so much that they're, you know, they, they have to export it. They can't keep it all in country. So anyway, he vows to track down the people who took her and get her back. I know that there are people who really like this movie, and as I always say, I really that doesn't bother me. That's fine. Love the movie if you want. Doesn't bother me in the least. However, let's see, where to start? I, I, fair enough, I'll start with the good. This is a pretty fast paced movie, R really fast paced movie. Once it gets going, it's, it starts out a little slow. It, it has a lot of sort of quick scenes early on to establish character relationships, various things. It doesn't really get going until basically half an hour in. And then it keeps moving consistently. And it doesn't overstay its welcome. It's 85 minutes short without the end credits, you know, not counting the end credits. The action is genuinely Good at times, great. They certainly thought up of thought up a lot of great gags. You know these little moments that you remember and repeat to your friends. 
it's not just about uh, he shot so and so many people or then there was a car chase. It's and then this happened. It's that kind of thing. They thought of a pretty good amount. There are. Uh, I wish I could give examples, but most of the really good ones are from late in the movie, and I really don't want to spoil anything. So anyway, yeah, the the action we you know we've got. It's mostly hand-to-hand -hand stuff, and it's very, very intense. If every single time it goes into action mode, it, it, it does real well at that. It's, it's very nice and close to the action, and it, use pers it uses perspective well. It, it, not in the sort of literal sense, but in the sense of who, what character's perspective are you seeing this from. And it, you really feel like you're there. And without the, this is somewhat similar to the Bourne sequels, you know, Bourne 2 and 3, Supremacy and Ultimatum. And what it has on those movies is not much, but Basically, you don't have the Paul Greengrass constantly shaky cam. In fact, I'm not even sure that all that much of this was shot with handhelds, or maybe it just doesn't feel handheld. There's not much filming in this that is bothersome at all. It's very, very fast, and also cut very fast. And it does have that thing of... Love it or hate it, it's basically how a lot of action movies approach it these days. The, the yeah, also the the Nolan Batman movies, the action is cut very fast, so it's kind of only after you basically perceive it, but you can't, you couldn't put it into words what happened. You, your brain just exactly processes it. It's it's that fast, it's that sudden with the changes that happens. You, it's, it's not like in older action movies where you can say, and then he shot him, and then him, and then he shot that guy. It's just kind of, a lot of bullets flew and then people were dead. And, and you can't really, you'd have to still the, you know, pause the DVD every so often or something to actually completely pick up what goes on. So, it's got that nice intensity going. Anyway, yeah, fan, you know, you've got the hand-to-hand -hand combat making up most of it, and sweet moves, gotta say. And Liam Neeson, really, you wouldn't have thought it, really, that he'd take so well to this, but yeah, it's... He's an action star now. That's that's really surreal. Anyway, yeah, mostly hand-to-hand -hand combat. There's some chasing and some shootouts. The action tends to feel much like the Bourne movies. It feel kind of natural, like it makes sense that there. It, you don't really get the sense that ah, oh, they just want an action scene right here. You actually understand why there needs, why why are these people fighting? It's uh, yeah. Now. fair to the movie. It deals with a very important problem that is that is an actual problem today. It's not like with the kind of yeah, anyway, it's it deals with human trafficking and it actually does get a lot of details right and showing them very 
very nicely the way they trick young women into this stuff and you could sort of it, it maybe helps spread awareness of that and yeah it, it actually is I mean when you look at a lot of action movies of 90s and early 2000s there are some like depictions of you know, the, the go-to bad guy is a drug lord and there are some of those where it's just ridiculous how evil this guy is and you just you don't believe it and you shouldn't because it's not real it it doesn't happen in real life well what you see in this movie largely is accurate of of the way that they get the girls and not sure if I said this yet, but there's a nice amount of detail to that. They don't just have like one way of getting the girls, or it's just a little bit. They they, they cover it pretty well. It's it's one of the few things they actually get into, sort of where they actually dwell on it a bit. They they really let you understand how this works. And I suppose that pretty well covers it for the good. Now, the dialogue is just bad. It is, a lot of it is these big, you know, movie lines. The, it's the way that Hollywood characters talk. Hollywood characters, not real people. And, you know, you've got lines like, I'll tear down the Eiffel Tower if I have to. It is great. To, Liam Neeson's sort of growly, badass voice is genuinely badass. You really do. You, you feel genuinely threatened by him. Although he doesn't quite break into the Dark Man voice. I was slightly disappointed by that because he break, he breaks into that even in Kinsey. That's when he wants to show that he you just made him mad. That's when he breaks into the, the, the monstrous dark man voice. So the uh, it's it's basically a dumb but fun action flick. And Arguably, that's also a bit, in spite of it actually going into this important subject and treating that with so much going into that and actually treating it with such realism, and then at the end of the day, it's this dumb kind of. I mean, you don't have any kind of human trafficking is a problem, of course. It, you need to stop the individuals doing it, which is, you know, obviously what the movie is of Liam Neeson doing, but you also need to actually make sort of preventative measures. You need legislation. Yeah, it's, it's a... Watch Divinity's videos on the subject. She could explain it a lot better. And people watching this and just getting the dumb fun out of it might not take it that seriously because of that, because of this, it's, it's also, yeah, because it is just this kind of dumb action movie, it's also a movie that is way too serious, and I, I don't know if that sounds contradictory with what I just said about the human trafficking, it's just that it's not it, it really needed to choose a, it, it needed to choose what it wanted to be. It can't be both a dumb you know lowest common denominator action movie, you know complete with the current uh, what's this yeah Kiefer Sutherland in 24 style protagonist who will yeah. It can be both that and then this actually serious, 
realistic. You know, if, if you tell me that 24 is realistic, yeah. And, you know, it's, as far as the, some of the scenarios go, at least. And then at the same time, yeah, deal with this very, deal very realistically with human trafficking. It, it needed to choose a side, and it, the, the very serious manner in which it goes about, it, it's... It, it makes it more difficult to sort of get into the action when really this is this is not a drama you know this is not a serious movie it it's a dumb movie that does go into a serious topic but that serious topic never completely con compels the rest of the movie to be more mature the misogyny I already got a little bit into that that you know, with the with the maturity, this is a movie that is seriously dedicated to protecting the frail male ego. I cannot believe just the the characterizations of females in this movie makes me want to punch every pe person who worked on this movie in the face. I cannot. Ah, oh, it's just infuriating. It's it's just. It's, it's like radical MRA BS. It's just unbelievable. It's just so... It's, it's, it goes into kind of how men have it so bad and women are just these unreasonable people who just won't let us be with the people we love. And it's just, oh, cry me a river. Man. And the it's actually it, it gets downright sentimental at points and you know Liam Neeson man he is dedicated he it must have taken a lot of effort to not crack up but yeah he pulls through on those sentimental moments of the film because it really is all about this father and his relationship with his daughter of course now the S setting it in france of course also allows them to have this you know cesspool of corruption and just this really awful, you know, definitely don't go there kind of atmosphere to it, and not address the, the U.S. In, in that regard. You know, it's definitely a movie that is desperate to, to, to talk Americans out of leaving their country, even on vacation. I have a strong feeling, and again, yeah, I know it was made by French people, but it reeks of just American. Maybe they're being like, maybe, maybe they're trying to court Americans or something. I don't know. But I, I sincerely feel that they are just terrified that if Americans do leave their own country, even on vacation, and come to Europe, they might see how nice we actually have it here. And even better than them on several points, and perhaps worse on others. And yeah, they're, they're absolutely terrified that it, it would lead to, you know, yeah, people leaving the U.S. en masse. Now, yeah, the, the corruption, and of course, it's a, the, 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 one of the great things about the Bourne movies, one of the many great things, is that they actually do dare say maybe we should actually question our government and government and hold them accountable. And, you know, watch, watching the Bourne trilogy, that's really the sense you get. You need to watch your government. Keep an eye on what they're doing. Because they could be doing something really, really horrible. 
and that is something incredibly important today. There are way too few movies that encourage people to look at what their governments are doing, and there are way too, pe way too few people watching their governments. And again, especially in the U.S. And so this comes along and says, no, 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 it's other governments, don't worry about ours. Yeah, just, if, if it was at least, all governments can do wrong things, can do horrible things, that would be fine. But no, 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 it's just not the U.S. government, but this other, in fact, the, the U.S. government, it doesn't presumably play a role in the movie, basically, but the, the only thing it really represents is that it is responsible for giving Brian the CIA skills that he uses to track down his daughter, and without them, it would be completely hopeless, as opposed to just mostly hopeless. And thus, it's like, see, it's good that we're training these killers with that that you know, follow our every order, and because otherwise, their daughters might be snapped up in human trafficking. You know, it's just, yeah. So yeah, I think that just about covers what. Born has that this movie severely lacks. Another movie that it really makes sense to compare this movie to is, of course, the Arnie movie Commando, because that again is this top trained killer and he loses his daughter. The, I suppose you could say the main difference is the, the age of the daughter and the, the exact intent with. The, the abduction, so the that movie, first of all, kicks off much faster, and that movie is not misogynistic. There is, there's not a lot of sort of sexualization in this movie. That is something I will give them. It's not terribly exploitative in that regard. When it shows the, these human trafficking victims, these you know, girls pushed into sex work, they do look really... It, it doesn't look at all appealing. It looks really horrible and you feel like, I really hope someone rescues them. But this movie makes females out to be... Yeah, I already pretty well covered that. Whereas Commando, the, the female characters may not kick as much ass as the male ones, but still substantially, you know, you, they're not second-class citizens. They, they can still kick ass and take names. And here, women are an obstacle or just something to be rescued. Again, like I said, the frail male ego must be protected. I suppose that more or less covers... Yeah, I believe so. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.